our group doing that? Nomenclature 3 chapter. And we're going to be going over the commingled pre-lock convention, including the RNS designation, Fisher projections, RNS designation used to determine enantiomer for dye stereomers, and the VE system. Assigning configuration steps. First, we're going to talk about assigning configuration for a particular stereocenter. So, step one is to prioritize the substituents from one through four, and we'll talk about how to do that later. Step two is to orient the molecules so the lowest priority, or number four substituent, is facing away from you. Step three is to look at the um, substituents from one, two, three, and see if it's clockwise, it'll be our configuration, and if it's counterclockwise. Kind of Rules for single bonds. We're going to start with the first rule, and that is when you're looking um, at a stereo center that has atoms that are all bound to it that are different. Um, and when that's the case, the atom with the highest atomic number gets the highest priority, and it goes down until the atom with the lowest atomic number gets the lowest priority. Um, if you're looking at an atom that has the same, two atoms that have the same atomic number uh, but are isotopes, the higher, the isotope with the higher mass gets the higher priority. Okay, so now we're going to look at rule two, and in rule two we're looking at a case where the atoms bound to the stereocenter are the same. So you start off by prioritizing each set based on rule number one that we just talked about. Um, then you move on and compare each set's highest priority atom. Okay, so the third and final rule, um, we're looking at a case when the sets of atoms in the first atom connected to the stereocenter um, all have identical sets. So if we're going to look at the example that we just looked at. In the first example, one carbon is bonded to three hydrogens and the other carbon was bonded to one carbon and two hydrogens, giving this one the higher priority. But let's say that this hydrogen becomes a carbon. That now makes these two sets identical. So you cannot identify which one has a higher priority. This being the case, you would have to go on to the next set of bonded atoms. So you would have to look at the atoms that are bonded to these two carbons to determine which one has the higher priority. Molecules with multiple stereocenters. All right, when naming molecules with multiple stereocenters, each stereocenter receives its own R or S designation. And in the name, all designations appear before any number identifying the location of any substituent. So an example of that is with 3 bromo 2 chloromethane which has a stereo center here and here. Um, then on the number 2 carbon, using the rules for priority, um, you know that it's an S um, configuration. And the number 3 carbon has an R. So when naming it, you would put in parentheses 2S for the 2 carbon S and 3R for 3 carbon R. 3-bromo-2-chloro. Stereocenters incorporated into rings. Go away! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when naming stereocenters incorporated into rings, the protocol for assigning R and S configurations does not change. So, you use rule number three to designate the priority when breaking a tie because it's connected to multiple carbons in a ring. And on the stereocenter, out that it's an S designation, and so when naming the ring, you get 1 1 dibro S um, next to the 3 chloro for the carbon that it's um, the carbon stereo center it's attached to 2 2 4 4 tetramethyl cyclopentane. Um, and then the only situation where you can use um, cis and trans versus the R and S is if there are exactly two stereo centers bonded to the ring. Um, each is bonded to one H atom, and only if the species is achiral. So, um, with this species, the ring of symmetry makes it achiral. Um, and by looking at the stereocenter, this one you can figure out is R, and this is S. So, you could name it 1R, 3S, 1,3-dibromocyclohexane, or more simply, cis 13 dibromo Using RS designations to identify enantiomers and distort diastereomers. Two molecules related by member 
approach with some but not all tetrahedral stereocenters. And the tumors, two molecules related by the inversion of all stereocenters. So we're going to have this molecule right here. All of the bonds here are facing towards us. This one's facing away. So we know what the designation's going to be. It's going to be 2R, 3S, 4S, and it's going to be exactly opposite. It's going to be 2S, 3R, 4R. So the R's and S's just switch because the actual bond angle is inverse. So cis, two non hydrogen substituents on the same side as the double bond. Same side of the double bond. Trans, two non hydrogen substituents on the opposite side of the double bond. As you can see, two non hydrogen substituents on the opposite side of the double bond. ZE system for double bonds. with more than one alkene. Whoa! <laughs> molecules with more than one alkene group. For each double bond, an EZ configuration can be assigned. The corresponding designation appears as a prefix in the name, and the number that corresponds to the double bond location will also be included. So as you can see, on this first carbon, there's an E configuration. And then on this third carbon, there will be a Z configuration. What up to go with some chicken? Really? The chicken was like the Greek chicken again in the oh. classics. And I was really excited. I don't like that chicken. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that is part of a ring can typically have both a Z and an E configuration. However, for smaller rings, it is typically omitted because the E configuration is less stable due to the ring strain. In nomenclature 3, we also took a look at the con angle prelog, which assigned priority to substituents about a stereocenter. We used this to figure out the RS configuration. We also took a look at the rules concerning double bonds, multiple stereocenters, and stereocenters within rings. We also took a look at the cis trans and the ZE configuration. Which is sent in this will assign the titles to the location of the high priorities about a double bond. Okay.